So let's hopefully end it off on this part. We're going to read Isaiah chapter 7 verse 20. And that day, Yahweh will use a razor hired from beyond the Euphrates River, the king of Assyria, to shave your heads and private parts, and to cut off your beards also. So why does the Most High Yahweh specifies that this hide razor will shave your heads and private parts? Well, because in the ancient times, they would castrate males and make them their servants, make them their eunuchs and whatnot. And also, we can read in Deuteronomy chapter 21, verse 11. If you notice among the captives, a beautiful woman, and are attracted to her, you may take her as your wife. Bring her into your home and have her shave her head, trim her nails, and put aside the clothes she was wearing when captured after she has lived in your house and mourned her father and mother for a full month. Then you may go to her and be her husband and she shall be your wife. Okay, so, you know, pretty much this is the reason why the Most tell you how it specifies that this high razor will, will shave off your heads. Alright, which, you know, is basically talking about the people's wisdom. Alright? Because, you know, also, our hair, you see, our hair is symbolic. Now, we're going to read this article. And it's uh, basically called thelonghairs.com. And it tells us here about long hair and Native American culture. So let's read this. I'll leave this in the description box as always. So you can go ahead and do your own studies. And it says, long hair traditions. Many cultures around the world, from Native Americans to Sikhs, believe that their hair has a special significance. Culture belief about our hair and how it can affect us go back as far as recorded history. Many ancient cultures believe there is power in uncut hair. Which we already know that all power, all wisdom, all glory, you know, belongs to Yahweh our God. So, let's go ahead and let's read this part here. Where it says, why grow long hair? Their beliefs around long hair, as many of their beliefs, are tied to the earth and nature. The long hair has symbolic significance, tying them to Mother Earth, whose hair is long grasses. Many Native Americans believe their hair is a physical manifestation of the growth of the spirit. And some say it allows for extrasensory perception and connection to all things. You see that? Okay, so we're pretty much done here. And again, you know, this is the reason why the Most High Yahweh says that this hide razor, which is talking about no other than Jebus Geis, okay, who is the modern day king of Assyria. Now let's read Isaiah chapter 10. Verse 15, where it says, Does the axe raise itself above the person who swings it? Or the saw boast against the one who uses it? As if a rod were to wield the person who lifts it up, or a club brandish the one who is not wood. Therefore, Yahweh, Yahweh Almighty, will send a wasting disease upon his sturdy warriors. Under his pump, a fire will be kindled like a blazing flame. Judgment on Assyria. This is the whole context of this chapter. Okay, so again, you know, the Most High Yahweh, he's the one who has created both good and evil. The Most High Yahweh is the one who formed the light, who created the darkness. Isaiah 54 and 16. See, it is I who created the blacksmith who fans the coals into flame and forges a weapon fit for its work. And it is I who created the, sorry, the destroyer to wreak havoc. No weapon forged against you will prevail. And you will refute every tongue that accuses you. 
This is the heritage of the servants of Yahweh, and this is their vindication from me, declares Yahweh. You see that? So now, you know, it's time for you to let your spiritual hair grow back. All right, because, you know, this king of Assyria, he shaved your, your head off. He cut off your private parts. He made our people become male and female shrine prostitutes. Now let's read Joel 3 and 6. You sold the people of Yahweh and Yerushalayim to the Greeks, that you might send them far from their homeland. See that? This is talking about both, physically and spiritually. It's more spiritually in case of anything, okay? Because, you know, when you really think about it, right, our people is all into this Greek mythology, Egyptian custom. And the Most High Yahweh told you that Egypt was going to be given into the hands of the Greeks, okay? So, this is the reason why, you know, I make movies like Medea. Tyler Perry plays as Medea, right? Which again, you know, I'm not knocking the actor, not knocking the movie. I just got to bring this out for the sake of the name of Yahweh and for his people. You see that? So, let's go ahead and understand that some people, you know, they're quick to uh, say, Oh, you see that? This dude sold out. He put on a dress. He want to be a fag. These people are into, you know, transgenderism and whatever. So what it is, is that the enemy, they want you to think that it's about sexuality. When in reality, it's, it's beyond that. You see that? But they're going to blame it on, you know, so-called gay people, right? Lesbian people and whatever kind of people. They're going to blame it on that because this is how they are. This is how they are. Look, Proverbs 17 and 15. Acquitting the guilty and condemning the innocent, Yahweh detests them both. And this is what people do today. So the reality of it, right? The reality of it, of why the Most High Yahweh condemns all this, is because of its customs and its worship and its origins, you see. Now, the name of Dia goes back to a so-called Greek goddess, all right? Medea. You see that? This is the truth beyond it. Beyond, uh, uh, you know, Mr. Tyler Perry putting on a dress and selling out. This is the true meaning of how he sold out. Okay? This is the reason why it says you sold the people of Yahweh and Yarawashalem, which is talking about the house of Yahweh, okay, to the Greeks, that you may send them far from their homeland. So this is why our people is into all this other stuff. Okay? They're into these uh, Egyptian custom and Greek mythologies, right? Medusa, Madam, Madonna. Micah 7 6. For a son dishonors his father, right? A daughter rises up against her mother. A daughter in law against her mother in law. A man's enemies are the members of his own household. Okay, why? Well, we just read here. How the people of Yahweh and of Yerushalayim and, and of Yasharel, they are all given into Egyptian and Greek customs. This is how a son dishonors his father. A daughter rises up against her mother, right? Because again, you know, the Most High Yahweh gave us one wisdom. All right, He gave us that that uh, that 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 heavenly wisdom, and that was to take care of the earth. So that wisdom that he has given us, right? Well, it basically has transgressed against his law. Let's go ahead and show you this. You know, maybe we can go ahead and understand it more clearly. And let the scriptures speak. So Isaiah 24 and 6. This is why it says this here once more. Therefore, a curse consumes the earth. You see that? This is what it means. When it says, a daughter rises up against her mother. Okay, so a curse consumes the earth. Its people must bear their guilt. Therefore, earth's inhabitants are burned up and very few are left. Micah chapter 7 verse 7. But as for me, I watch in hope for Yahweh. So again, you have to understand that the Most High Yahweh is saying that all this is going to be happening. In these times and in these days, we're going to be, you know, living in times of tribulation, 
of judgment and of restoration. All of those who hope in Yahweh, you're going to be kept away from all of that madness. All right. This is why it says, but as for me, right? Because again, we just read the previous verse. A son rises up against his father, a daughter against her mother, right? So all that's going to be happening. But those who honor the name of Yahweh, but as for me, as for us, we watch and hope for Yahweh. We wait for the Most High, our Savior. Our God will hear us. Okay, that's the reason why he gives us another day to live, to understand his words. You understand that? So that we may better ourselves, better, you know, our understanding and acknowledging who is our God and teaching it unto our children, our family, our friends. This is his glory coming to pass. While all this is happening, now let's read Isaiah chapter 9, verse 19. By the wrath of Yahweh Almighty, the land will be scorched and the people will be fuel for the fire they will not spare one another again this is talking about Satan fighting against Satan these religions fighting against each other these uh, secret societies fighting against each other right these governments fighting against each other right and they're doing it all in the name of gold oil and drugs that is their God believe it or not all right they try to give you all these other fake stories on the news because they don't want you to know what's really going on. Okay, but remember, they are the biggest drug dealers. They are the biggest hypocrites and liars. And it says here, on the right, they will devour, but still be hungry. On the left, they will eat, but not be satisfied. Why? Because the Most High Yahweh told you that these people, right? These people who believe in idols, well, they're going to be put to shame. Each will feed on the flesh of their own offspring, which is a precept to Ezekiel. Let's go ahead and bring that out. Okay, let's go ahead and find it first. Sorry. Here we go. Ezekiel 5 and 9. Look what it says now. Because of all your detestable idols. You see that? That's the reason why. Okay? Just in case. Just in case you want to know why. Okay? Because our people, they like to know why the most high do things. So look what it says here. Because of all your detestable idols, I will do to you. What I have never done before, and will never do again. Okay? Therefore, in your midst, parents will eat their children, and children will eat their parents. I will inflict punishment on you, and will scatter all your survivors to the winds. Alright? Now let's go ahead and show you this scripture, in case you want to know why this is happening to you. Okay, Jeremiah chapter 5, let's go ahead and start off, alright let's start off in verse 17, and it says here, they will devour your harvest and food, which is talking about the enemy, our oppressors, the people who have given you lies and religion, okay, they eat up your fruitful thoughts, they don't let you think for yourself, they're considered to be the locusts. They will devour your harvest and food, devour your sons and daughters. They will devour your flocks and herds, devour your, your vines and fig trees. With the sword, they will destroy the fortified cities in which you trust. Yet even in those days, declares Yahweh, I will not destroy you completely. And when the people ask, why has Yahweh our God done all this to us? You will tell them this. As you have forsaken me and served foreign gods in your own land, so now 
You will serve foreigners in a land, not your own. Announce this to the descendants of Jacob and proclaim it in Yahweh. Hear this, you foolish and senseless people who have eyes but do not see. In other words, you know, they all have spirituality. You know, they all say, oh yeah, I know about the Most High. Oh yeah, you know, the Most High is with me. Who have eyes but do not see. In other words, they don't understand. Who have ears but do not hear. Right? They all read the Word of God. They all want to teach it to everybody else, but they don't understand. So look what it says here. Should you not fear me, declares Yahweh? Should you not tremble in my presence? I made the sand a boundary for the sea, an everlasting barrier it cannot cross. The waves may roll, but they cannot prevail. They may roar, but they cannot cross it. You see that? And the most tell you how I told you about the wicked. The wicked are like the raging sea. All right, moving to and fro, they get no rest. So this is what it's talking about. In Isaiah 9 and 20, on the right, they will devour, but still be hungry. On the left, they will eat, but not be satisfied. This is why the Most High Yahweh tells us, do not be over-righteous, do not be over-wicked. So now, you know, you have to understand that these people, they like to use reverse psychology. You know, in the very beginning, they used reverse psychology, right? Satan himself used reverse psychology. The Most High Yahweh told you, don't eat the apple, and Satan said, go right ahead, nothing will happen. Okay, so, you know, this is what's going on now in these times and in these days, right? As it is in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. So the Most High Yahweh said that a lot of people are going to wake up in the last days, you know? People are going to understand who's their God. People are going to understand that they've been lied to, but there's going to be people set. Set on trying to destroy what the Most High Yahweh is doing. Their hearts is bent on evil. Their hearts still cling on to their worthless idols. So they're going to continue to speak bad about those who trust in their God. But it's okay. Because Yahweh will vindicate us as always. Praise Yahweh for that. Daniel 12 and 4. But you, Daniel, roll up and seal the words of the scroll until the time of the end. Many will go here and there to increase knowledge. So that's what's happening now. Okay, but again, many people, they're trying to be wise in their own eyes. Only the sincere servants of Yahweh, they're going to be wise through the spirit of the Most High. Only through honoring the name of Yahweh. That's how we shall increase in knowledge, because Yahweh shall increase our number. Proverbs 14 and 17, a quick-tempered person does foolish things, and the one who devises evil schemes is hated. The simple inherit folly, but the prudent are crowned with knowledge. You see that? The Most High Yahweh, He will increase our numbers. Isaiah 28 and 5. In that day, Yahweh Almighty will be a glorious crown, a beautiful reef for the remnant of His people. That one third that has been refined, that is being refined, that will be made spotless through the Spirit of Yahweh. He will be a spirit of justice to the one who sits in judgment, a source of strength to those who turn back to the battle at the gate. Isaiah 29 and 18. And that day the deaf will hear the words of the scroll, and out of gloom and darkness the eyes of the blind will see. Alright, in other words, they will understand. They will see the glory of Yahweh come into pass. At his as it is written in Malachi 3 and 16, Then those who feared Yahweh talked with each other, and Yahweh listened and heard. A scroll of remembrance was written in His presence concerning those who feared Yahweh and honored His name. On the day when I act, says Yahweh Almighty, they will be my treasured possession. I will spare them just as the Father has compassion and spares His Son who serves Him. Malik, sorry, Isaiah 60 and 19. The Son will no more be your light by day, which is talking about Christianity, nor will the brightness of the moon shine on you, which is talking about Islam, for Yahweh will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Okay? So the Most High Yahweh says that He is doing this for the sake of His name.
And with that, praise Yahweh.